Thank you. So zip codes. Um, I was uh, having dinner with uh, some friends about 15 years ago um, during, uh, during grad school, and for some reason I started thinking about uh, zip codes and uh, how they actually work. Uh, you know, so I'm sitting at dinner, um, a lot of fun at parties, um, sitting at dinner and, and getting this thing about like, you know, the five-digit postal code system that we use in the U.S. And uh, at the time, I'm living in Cambridge, uh, all the zip codes there start with zero. Um, I'd grown up in Michigan, uh, everything there started with a four, and I had just moved from San Francisco where the uh, zip code started with a nine, and you know, started thinking you know, there might be an actual pattern to this. This is going sort of east to west, and um, you know, genius. Um, so I sat down, so soon after I um, sat down and actually started making a uh, really quick interactive sketch of just kind of what this looks like. So um, you know, sure enough, here are all the, uh, the zeros, the ones, the twos, and so on. And so we have this regional uh, thing that happens with the uh, numbering system within the US. And uh, a little more to the point, we can say here's 0, 02. Uh, we're now in eastern Massachusetts. One is uh, essentially the county level. Three uh, brings us down to the city, and here we are in Cambridge. Um, a little bit more interesting, let's um, actually zoom in. And so here we'll go four, and then one, uh, and nine and seven, so here's uh, Ypsilanti, where I grew up on a farm, or backing out to uh, Ann Arbor, the thriving metropolis nearby. All right. Um, but also, like, you know, so having done this, we can you know, actually do, do the same thing, but just with um, the names of cities. You know? So this is a very simple, uh, simple sketch. Let's see, well, maybe we can't do it with the names of cities today. Um, but fundamentally, what we, uh, what we're trying to do is, this has been a, a theme that comes through in a lot of uh, the work that I've done. You know, so working as a, as a designer, I've always been able to take some random uh, curiosity or something that I'm interested in or uh, want to work on and been able to kind of turn that into work. You know, so you can kind of reframe everything based on uh, your particular curiosity. Um, you know, was, I wanted to uh, learn about the human genome, so I made that the subject of my PhD work and um, really dug into the, uh, the field of genetics. And, it brings me to this, uh, this quote from Charles Kingsley. Uh, Kingsley was a, a professor and a historian, a writer. He was a contemporary uh, you know, of Darwin's. They were sort of pen pals. Uh, and this idea that you know, we act as though comfort and luxury were the chief requirements of life, when all that we need to make us really happy is something to be enth enthusiastic about. And so I think um, it's one of the themes that we're gonna, you know, we see uh, throughout this conference. But you know, fundamentally, what we're doing is uh, trying to take this curiosity and, um, you know, in my case, I'm using design as a way of uh, digging into something I'm curious about, being able to pull that apart and explore it, and then try and use it as a way of, uh, you know, teaching and explaining to somebody else what, what that interest is. You know, the amazing thing that happened with the, the zip code piece was that, you know, I hadn't bothered putting it online, and um, somebody actually uh, encouraged me to do it, and we had thousands and thousands of people actually going and playing with zip codes, which is, you know, kind of bizarre, and this is, you know, now, um, many years later, I've wasted a lot of people's time. Um, so fast forward to, um, you know, present day, uh, you know, a number of years later, I've uh, started a firm where we're actually, you know, working out some of these ideas and, um, you know, brought other people along this, uh, this journey along with me. And um, so I'm really lucky to have you know, the experience of working with a bunch of people who have a similar um, view of you know, wanting to be able to uh, pull things apart and understand data and uh, be able to frame it in different ways for, uh, for people. One of the first projects that we did uh, around 2010, 2011, uh, we were asked by National Geographic to uh, do a project about you know, the um, world uh, population actually hitting 7 billion. And so, you know, how do you actually frame that? You know, when you say something like 7 billion, people kind of uh, glaze over with, you know, larger numbers like that. And how do you uh, frame it in some fashion that actually gives people context about what 7 billion actually means? And I'd always been fascinated by uh, population density and just how incredibly uneven it is um, around the world. And, you know, can we use that as a way to tell a story about, about population? And so what we did was we took, um, the, uh, the typical way you might draw a map and you know, uh, reversed it a little bit. So instead of uh, a large dot representing a large number of people, we used a large dot to represent a small number of people and very tiny dots to uh, 
represent a, a very large number of, of folks. So we've got these tiny red dots that are uh, representing 300,000, and then a large gray area that's going to be just 6,000 people. And so if we look at something like uh, India, we can uh, see just how incredibly detailed it gets. So basically, this gives us a way of um, you know, having more fidelity and you know, more that kind of catches your eye in that area that um, is of most interest. But also, just on, this, on the left-hand side of the diagram, um, you know, see that little orange uh, pathway that you know, kind of shows up in the middle of the nowhere. So that's the Nile in the Nile River Delta, and this incredible amount of population that you have around that, even though there's uh, the land on either side. And so you know, these types of things start emerging out of the data, which make it um, really fun. Uh, you know, here's what North America looks like, you know, a very different, you know, uh, type of picture. Uh, a much, you know, larger project that we uh, worked on, we were talking to um, Thomson Reuters, who asked us to uh, do a project about China. Um, in particular, the uh, leadership tr transition, you know, they have a once in a decade um, handover of, you know, who's running the, uh, the Communist Party. Uh, and you know, in spite of China being the fastest growing economy and one of the largest countries on earth, we know next to nothing about it. And so we started building this uh, HTML5 based um, web app plus um, iPad app that, uh, you know, starts unpacking some of these ideas. So there's a team of journalists who uh, gathered all of this information about how, um, you know, the diff who actually is running China. So uh, in this case, we're looking at the social view where we can see the connections between uh, different people. We're trying to frame the idea of uh, how social power begins with family in this case and understanding how those, uh, those family ties can lead to uh, later influences. Here's now President Xi Jinping and his, uh, you know, uh, first degree of uh, his social network and then uh, to the right there, the, the second degree. And then we can take things like those uh, softer social ties and contrast that with this uh, institutional view where we have the uh, seven members of the uh, Politburo Standing Committee and being able to see their roles within the party and the military and government. So they have a number of different roles. So here's you know, technically what's happening on paper that the um, hierarchy, you know, structure to things, but we're being able to juxtapose that with uh, these softer, you know, social ties in terms of how, you know, humans actually interact with one another. And you can go really deep on this. So, um, you know, given a particular um, area, kind of um, seeing more of the background about what, um, uh, what role each, each of these takes, and then it's all cross-referenced across the, uh, the rest of the application. And then finally, we can do things like uh, here, where we're doing a, a comparison of different of uh, different people's careers. So the uh, within Chinese politics, that there's a very specific um, you know uh, path that you take. You know, going from uh, being a provincial uh, deputy, then a chief, and then um, moving up to something more national. And so we can literally uh, plot the arc of different people's careers and, you know, just how uh, significant, um, you know, and who are the up-and-comers and things like that. Uh, and then we also have just, you know, some of what Reuters is more typically known for in terms of uh, longer-form journalism and um, being able to uh, do some uh, more in-depth reporting about the um, uh, topics in China, but also, you know, cross-referencing that against the actual application itself. So, you know, and then what goes behind this is, um, you know, we do a lot of sketches like this. So this, uh, the data, it's about a one and a half million words that actually goes into the final application. Um, tens of thousands of connections. This is just a few, uh, few hundred or even uh, maybe a few thousand connections. And we're trying to map out here just how much de detail do we actually need on that, on that social view that, um, to understand how people are connected to one another. And so we never want to put that sort of diagram in front of people, and so instead it evolves through uh, some back and forth with um, design and development uh, to something here where it's you know, a little bit more structured, and then finally what you know, winds up in that, um, the actual uh, final version. So I encourage you to uh, check it out. So it's a, just a free um, online site. It's connectedchina.reuters.com. Runs on a uh, browser, runs on a, uh, a tablet. Um, lots of fun and you know, just a really amazing uh, resource. The last project I wanted to talk about was um, 
looking at activity tracking. So we've done some work with um, Nike most recently, uh, looking at their uh, their fuel bands. So this uh, activity monitor that's been, you know, becoming sort of a, uh, an interest as far as the quantified self thing. But um, with the fuel band, what we're doing is uh, taking minute by minute data and being able to say how much uh, activity uh, or how active is somebody over the course of the day. So we have 1,440 data points. Um, you know, in one 24-hour period. And then imagine what that looks like across, you know, somebody's entire history. So, you know, uh, days are different than weekends. Um, imagine what that looks like across millions and millions of records, um, being able to do that globally, being able to see different ch uh, changes in terms of how people are, um, how we're, you know, we're incredibly similar and we're also incredibly different. And it's this um, really fascinating data set. And, um, the uh, one, you know, one example of uh, something that we did with that was uh, here where we uh, just wanted to make a poster of, you know, what does your year of activity look like? So, you know, here's uh, the 2013 activity for, um, in this case, this is our, our contact at Nike. And um, moving left to right, we've got uh, 3 a.m. to 3 a.m. And we've just taken those plots and, you know, superimposed them over uh, one another. And what we see on the vertical axis is just how much activity um, you actually have and be able to see some of that variation. And what we wanted to do is just create a poster that, you know, it looks interesting, but it's also true to your data, that it feels real in terms of how you um, actually go through your, your day. So in, in her case, um, she's very good about actually getting a decent run in, but, you know, sometime between six and, and nine, that sort of large uh, blue area there. And then, you know, the rest of the day is a little bit, uh, a little bit less even, that, you know, doing a lot of travel and such. Um, on the other hand, this is uh, somebody in our, our studio, uh, James, who um, bikes to work. So he's extremely structured with, you know, gets up, uh, bikes in, uh, almost always go for, goes for a walk to, uh, to get lunch, and then bikes back in the evening, his uh, evening hours uh, departing, being a little more regular, perhaps stuck doing Nike work. Um, the, uh, and then here's somebody totally, you know, so here's somebody who's a, a marathoner and triathloner, and like, how intense is this? Um, and so that uh, they're just getting in, you know, hours of activity and, out, um, you know, it has a, just a completely different visual signature. And um, here's, um, here's your humble speaker who is not a triathlon trainer um, and is incredibly regular about his days, apparently. Um, although I have a new daughter, and so we have these extra spikes happening in the middle of the night. Uh, but the thing that we're going after here is really just this, you know, the uniqueness of uh, all these different individuals and how, um, you know, wanting to have this sort of profile that, uh, you know, looks true to you, but um, has, uh, you know, it actually has this wonderful sort of variation to it and be able to um, express that for people. And so uh, closing up that the... For the last couple of years, I've been, you know, running this company, and um, I tend to be somebody who uh, gets kind of, uh, you know, worn out with the the day to day and a bit, you know, a bit of the grind, and um, uh, doing things like, uh, you know, understanding the tax implications of uh, setting up profit sharing for a 401k plan is not really like pulling apart data and you know doing interesting things with it. And um, what I really want to be doing is is making things and uh, having ways to work with other people who are uh, making things as well. And um, as I mentioned, uh, I have a, a, a newborn who um, she uh, showed up in October. And um, so here she is. Um, and the, the amazing thing here is, uh, you know, so she's at this age where uh, everything's incredible. Like everything is something to be enthusiastic about. And so uh, <clears throat> what I've done is actually uh, made this my, my lock screen on the phone, and, uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> pardon, I didn't do this while practicing, that's weird. <laughs> uh, I miss my daughter uh, and my wife. Um, anyhow, uh, but you know, to her, every, anything that she sees is so incredible and so uh, so exciting that it's this really wonderful image of you know just exactly that. That it's all we really need is something to be enthusiastic about. So, thanks very much.